Good evening. Iowa's swing state status has brought us to the White House tonight as both parties vie for the votes that could determine who holds the most powerful job in the world come November. But amid Romney and Barack Obama as they battle it out over taxes, tonight what could be a major signal from the White House for the QCA's largest employer. Tonight, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview asking the president your questions. Mr. President, for the American people, it seems like we've been experiencing crisis after crisis from everything from student loans to the budget all coming down to the wire. And we have the Rock Island Arsenal, which, right. as you know, is our largest employer, 8,000 jobs, about 500 private companies that do business with it. Right. There are concerns that if defense cuts happen because the commission was not able to reach a consensus, that those jobs could be in jeopardy. How do you, as a president, moving forward, start to bring people together so we get past some of the stress that's affecting everyday lives of so many Americans? And is the arsenal safe? Well, uh, let me tell you, I, I do think the arsenal is safe. Dear Sophie, I am here in the Korngal Valley in Afghanistan. It's very pretty with lots of green trees and big rocks. A letter home from a soldier serving in Afghanistan. Getting to go to faraway places and experience her culture. And he got to do his job, his job that he loved. A job that Annie Cox knew was very dangerous. My jar job is hard to explain. It takes me far away. And I don't like that. But Daddy is doing a job that almost no one else in America does, protecting America. Nathan's mission, clearing improvised explosive devices from roads, serving his country, protecting other soldiers. And he understood why it was so important to him and looked to her army family for support. I was okay with it. You know, I made friends right away. I um, surrounded myself with other good women that were in the same situation as I, I was. And, um, we all leaned on each other's shoulders. It was that support group she was with on the day that everything changed. Her friend's husband was in charge of setting up the casualty notification team. It was Sophie's first soccer game of the season. Her husband Pete was standing right there and he got a phone call. Not knowing I was standing right there talking to his wife because he took the phone call and went way out in the field we left, we went to a birthday party. I remember after the party, I said to Sophie, I just don't feel like going home. We went and grocery shopped. I stopped and visited with the neighbors, pulled in my drive, unloaded groceries, was cooking supper, and I seen the first green suit walk by. My neighbor, Candace, grabbed Sophie and took her over to our other neighbors. And then I opened the door and they asked if I was Annette Dawn Cox. Um wife of Staff Sergeant Nathan Cox. And I said yes. And um, I remember looking at Chaplain Pearson and saying, I don't think I want to know what, I don't want to hear what you're going to say. And he said, Annie, please, we have to do this. After calling Nathan's family and connecting with her Army network, Annie did her best to prepare herself for the most difficult conversation of her life, telling her young daughter Sophie, just five years old, that daddy wasn't coming home. I just said, Sophie, I need to talk to you. Do you remember what happened to Chloe? Chloe was our dog we put to sleep two weeks before um, Nathan left. And she said, yeah, dad told me she went up to heaven to see God. And I said, yeah, that's where your dad's at. And she just said, you mean my dad's not coming home? And I said, no. And she said, he's in heaven with Chloe. And I said, yes. And she cried. She was only five, but she understood. Sophie will always have something from him with her in a DVD made by the USO of him reading a book that he chose just for her. Hi, Soph. Hey, I'm going to read you Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. And in the words he wrote for her in this letter. And oh yeah, try not to be grumpy in the morning. Lots of love, hugs, and kisses, Daddy. And Annie would soon find out he left something behind for her too. His journal. 
for someone who's deployed and he's in the infantry and he's a soldier and he's supposed to be all big and bad and gruff, and he wrote of the, the beauty of the land. You see him, you feel him when you read that journal, I assume, yeah. for you as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's as, when I read it, it's as though he's sitting there talking to me about where he was at. A reminder of who he was as she asked all of us to remember all the Gold Star families. Don't forget about our, our Gold Star families. It's, uh, they, we, call, we call it the Gold Star family it's member, but it's a membership no one wants to be a part of. It has a way to honor all of them. Annie is preparing for a trip to Washington, D.C. on an honor flight. And the date of that trip will make the tribute even more emotional. It's going to be a great honor to go out there. And it will be four years to the day that Nate was killed when we leave on the honor flight. That's kind of like the Wiley Poem special, isn't it? There are times when a simple number can mean so much. That number for the McCarley family is two. The father, a World War II veteran. I'm with veterans, but the most important veteran in my life is right here. His son, a two-star general. As soon as I was able, I joined the service and continue to try to emulate all that he has done for the country. A trip together, their second chance at a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Ready for a day they thought might not come. But now that the journey has started, they both know this day will touch on every emotion they have. That's true. Now, the moment they have hoped and prayed for, here together at the World War II Memorial, posing for pictures, taking in the beauty of it all, and then the reality of what all of this stands for brings the memories of so many years ago back in an instant. The price of freedom, marked by these 4,048 gold stars, each representing 100 Americans who died in the war. And you think of the thousands Thousands of men who got a bullet and went in that slush on the border. It's just, it, it makes my stomach churn to think of it. When I was in B-17s and the guys inside getting shot up in pieces, why me? How did they miss me? Every other guy got it. You didn't think about it. And you did not make close friends simply because of the next day you see an empty bed there. God, but it still did get to me. Near the end, I just, uh, I was shaking like a leaf. For no reason, I couldn't hold the navigator's pen in my hand. It was just, oh, it, it was horrible. They all, in their own way, did the real thing. Things that we got to instill in the younger generations of these days. Something he instilled in his own son, who has gone on to inspire the next generation of soldiers. To me, he's the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> Yeah. No, my son is really, whether he was a buck private or a two-star general, I still love him just as much. Now the two are sharing an experience that goes way beyond that of father and son, but as veterans, an experience that almost did not happen. A rare second chance after missing the October flight due to illness. I said to myself and I said to my dad and... Uh, prayed a little bit and said, if we have this opportunity once again, we're going to do everything in our power uh, to see to it that uh, we both get here. Both of them knowing they were quickly running out of time. Well, I tell them I have cancer and I I'm on hospice. To talk to you though, so. so they don't expect me to live maybe a couple more months. But the point is, I made it. I saw this thing and that's what the greatest, it's just, I'm so thankful for all the hundreds of people involved to make this come true. After a day of discovery, the two come home as they left, together, to a hero's welcome for two veterans who have just completed a mission of a lifetime. What a wonderful country and a wonderful group of people still here. We don't think to see that in the newspapers or TV, but oh man, it, it lightens my heart. It's all worth it, every bit of it.